Hello and welcome back. So now we've hit the point where we've got you know an iPhone application. It's got an image in it. We want to do some image manipulation. And to do that, we'll want access to each and every pixel that's in this image. Usually you don't have access to that information. You have to, you know, you have to decode the image into a buffer if we want to get access to that. And that's what we want to do right now. Um, so to do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of uh, a feature in Xcode. So here's Xcode, here's the project we were working on. I'm going to create um, not a new project, but a new playground. So file, new, playground. So now let's call it image conversion. And uh, I will try to be as quick as possible, but I may ramble on here. Let's see how it works out. So here we are in the playground, which I love. Um, the playground basically will take our Swift code, compile it, and over on the side, it actually shows us dynamically, uh, you know, the result from each line's execution. Um, so the first thing we want to do is I would like to create an image. Actually, it's a UI image. Those are the things that we can load up. Um, UI images. We need to give it. Uh, we need to have a named image, and we need to give it the name of the resource. Ah, we need to put it. We need to have the image in here, the the PNG or the JPEG, as part of our, uh, our resource structure. So I'm going to click over on the side here. We can see resources, and down here in Finder, here's a thumbnail image of Rebecca. Beckle thumb. So this is a small image uh, that really speeds up our, you know, our processing time here while we're experimenting. So I think we call it, what do we call it again? Beckle thumb? Yeah, Beckle thumb. Let's see if I can spell that. Mm, Beckle thumb. Dot PNG. Cool. Okay. So. Ah, and it evaluated, and we can see that it's uh, reporting. It's got a width of 81 and a height of 71. And this is kind of cool. If we click on the uh, look icon, hey, nice. Yeah, it's a low resolution image, so that's a little spotty. That's okay. Um, now, let's write some code to decode all those pixels. So we want to decode every single pixel into a buffer. And then we're going to take that buffer and then we're going to do the inverse operation. We're going to recreate a new image based off that buffer. And if we can round trip that, then we know we've got, you know, the basics of our um got the basics of our uh, two main functions going that we're going to need. So, to do that, how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of core graphic things that we need to do, and I can never get this stuff straight, so I always have to google it. Oh, I don't have that page anymore. Well, anyways, you can Google it and you can find out how to do it. Uh, I did create a cheat sheet for myself. Here we go. Um, and ultimately, it comes down to two main operations. The CG context draw image is what takes our image and renders it into a context. And the context is the thing that actually, you know, um, is this decodable uh, buffer. Um, that, 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 that's roughly what it all boils down to. So let's start grabbing some of this code and we'll go through line by line. I'll start with the context. So actually it's a little ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. Because we can't, we can't call that until we've got the context. So we need to create the context first. So, oh, I think I think I got a typo there, but that's okay because we know what we're doing. I believe it's core graphics create context. So let uh, we'll say context equals that bad boy. Okay. Um, oh, we called it image context here, so I'll just call it this. That is a better name. I like that. Okay. No shock here. We got lots of parameters that I gotta fill in. Let's fill them in. Um, first of all, raw data. Well, let's start with the width and the height. So the width and the height are something we need to extract from the original image. Um, 
So I'll go image dot, and I believe it's size. Yep. Oops. Second thing, uh, we know that we're going to, you know, for testing purposes, uh, we know that we're going to get an image. So I'm just going to use the exclamation mark so that we have an image. It's not an optional. Uh, I'll go size, and I can grab the height. Cool. So I can go let height equals that, and I can go let width equals image dot size dot width. Excellent. Okay. Uh, now another thing, these guys are actually, if we were to look this up, um, these guys are floats, and I know that's going to be a problem for us. We're going to want to use, we're going to want them to be integers, because really, why do you want to represent that as a float? I guess I could have left that to later. You would have seen errors pop up later. Uh, but, okay, so now we've got the width and the height parameter sorted out. Yay! Uh, bits, actually it should say bits per component. And I happen to know... Okay, so let's talk about our plan here. We want a 32-bit representation of a pixel. So we want 8 bits for the red, 8 bits for the blue, 8 bits for the green, and 8 bits for the alpha channel. So obviously bits per component is let bits per component equals 8. Cool. Uh, bytes per row, very similar. Uh, we know that there's, uh, you know, uh, 8 bits is a byte, uh, 8 bits for red, so it's 4. There's 4 bytes per pixel, you know? Um, so since there's 4 bytes per pixel, if we want the number of bytes per row, we need the number of pixels, which is the width, and we multiply that by 4. So let's go let width equals four times, uh, what was it again? Not width, silly, I'll fix that in a second. Let bytes per row equals width times four, yay. Okay, that makes total sense to me. Uh, color space, okay, we want the RGB color space, I'll just grab the, there we go, we can just grab this. Um, I'll mention, okay, um, this can actually decode, this combination of things can decode the image in multiple ways, and we know that we want an RGB uh, A for alpha color space, so the color space itself for the RGB components is RGB. Uh, there's other color spaces that we could use, but we don't need to go into that. Ooh, we're getting close. So now we need the uh, raw data buffer, and the bitmap info. Uh, okay, so the raw data buffer, we want to, uh, let's just copy it, but this will make sense when you see it. It's that, there we go. An unsafe mutable pointer. Lovely. Uh, oop, capital I on uint. There we go. So basically, it's an array of unsigned integers. Uh, we're allocating that array, and it's the number, it's the width times the height. Makes sense? So each pixel, the total number of pixels is width time height, and each pixel is a 32-bit unsigned integer, and this just allocates uh, a buffer for that. So there's our raw data. Uh, bitmap info. Ah, that's one of the more weird ones. I'll just copy that, then we'll explain it. This is our opportunity to tell the system how we want to decode, you know, what format of pixel we want. There's all kinds of different things supported, um, but um, ultimately we want a 32-bit representation for the pixel, and uh, we do want the alpha channel, and we want the alpha channel at the end. Uh, I think that's what that means, I'll, um, it's boilerplate. Uh, we will find out. So there's the bitmap info, uh, and finally the CG context call here. Um, context create unresolved identifier. What did I get wrong? Uh, 
Oh, you know, it's uh, CG bitmap context crate if memory serves. That looks better. Nice. And since we don't have any compile errors, we can actually see, you know, every line it's echoing out a little something. So at this point right here, we've got the raw data buffer populated. Um, we could look inside this raw data buffer, but there's, you know, it's not that interesting. Uh, it'll be hard to decode. Let's write the code to actually take this raw data buffer, do the inverse operation, and see if we get the original image. Um, to do the inverse operation, very similar. Uh, it's basically uh, two or three things, so let's let's do them one at a time. So, we want... Oh, right, right, right. Uh, we need to get access to um, the pixels buffer, which is basically uh, the raw data information, and we can just grab that. There we go. Cool. So we've taken our raw data and we've returned it as an unsafe mutable buffer pointer. Um, and we've passed in the base address. Um, it's a bit of jiggery pokery, but it uh, works. Um, let's put the word let there. Bits, it's bits per component. We don't care about the last two parameters. Okay, now we have our context. Uh, finally, we want to, let's see, we want to convert that to an image. So, grab that there. That should get us pretty darn close. As a matter of fact, I think that'll do it. Uh, right, so this created the context. So we went from our buffer. Uh, this gives us a different kind of pointer within the buffer. Um, this converted it to a context. Um, you know, we once again we describe the format of the data. That's what all this is about: is we describe the format of the data, um, and that's our context. And then we can convert that back into an image. So, moment of truth, it says, "Oh, it's 81 by 71 pixels." And if we click on the icon here, yay, it looks pretty identical to me. Matter of fact, we can expand that there, and we can expand that there, and yeah, those two images look identical. Had we done some manipulation to the buffer in here, we would have seen a different image. So, that is basically it. We can use this code in the next phase where we actually uh, play with these images. So, uh, that's a good spot to stop it. Uh, thank you, and I will uh, join you again soon.